in a move to ban birth tourism in the U.S. Two senators and introduced the bill this week. They say tens of thousands of people exploit the immigration loophole every year, and U.S. citizenship is not for sale. I have lived the U.S. senators introduced a new bill to stop foreigners from traveling to the U.S. to give birth with the intention of getting U.S. citizenship for their children. It's commonly known as birth tourism. According to the press release, Chinese and Russian nationals especially engage in birth tourism. In 2012, there were roughly 10,000 birth tourists from China. In March, the Center for Immigration Studies estimated that over 20,000 birth tourists come to the U.S. every year. The bill is called the Ban Birth Tourism Act. It would ban birth tourism as an acceptable basis for getting a B non-immigrant visa. It's typically for travelers coming to the U.S. temporarily for recreation or pleasure. According to the senators, it would codify a similar rule change that went into effect in January. In the press release, Senator Marsha Blackburn wrote, Citizenship is for those who love our great country and want to contribute to and preserve freedom, not those parachuting in to obtain a second citizenship so that they may come back whenever they please. U.S. authorities have recently tried to crack down on businesses profiting off of birth tourism. In January 2019, federal prosecutors unsealed indictments naming 19 people linked to Chinese birth tourism schemes. The charges included identity theft, immigration fraud, and money laundering. One German telecommunications company reportedly expanded its ties with Huawei without telling its main investor, the German government. NTD's Arian Pastar has the story. German company Deutsche Telekom came under fire this week for allegedly going ahead and building its 5G network with Huawei. Deutsche Telekom is the parent company of T-Mobile and Europe's biggest telecommunications company. Huawei has been under international criticism for security concerns and is now subject to U.S. sanctions. According to the biggest German business daily Handelsblatt, Deutsche Telekom has been expanding its ties with Huawei without telling its main investor, the German government. It owns around 32 percent of Deutsche Telekom's shares. Germany's coalition government has been divided over including Huawei in Germany's 5G infrastructure. The parties were trying to come to an agreement last year, but didn't manage to do so. Germany's foreign intelligence agency has warned that infrastructure shouldn't be built by a company that can't be trusted. After the summer break, the German parliament is to decide on a law that sets out the safety requirements for 5G vendors. Reporting by Arian Pastar, NTD News, Berlin. In the UK, pressure on the foreign secretary to target human rights abusers in China under the UK's new sanctions. Our UK correspondent Jane Werrell has more. Welcome news for many this week from Dominic Raab. Here he's announcing the UK's new sanctions list that targets human rights abusers. So if you're a kleptocrat or an organised criminal, you will not be able to launder your blood money in this country. The sanctions, effective immediately, include travel bans and asset freezes. It targets a total of 49 individuals and organisations in North Korea, Russia, Burma and Saudi Arabia. The list, though, doesn't include human rights abusers in China, a point that came up several times. Could I just, however, raise one issue here, which is a remarkable silence on human rights violations in China. Rob, who was once a human rights lawyer, said the government is working on the next set of designations. So I'm very hopeful that we will see uh, sanctions against members of the Chinese Communist Party who have committed the most appalling human rights abuses taking place around the world at the moment. Notorious abuses against religious and ethnic minorities in China, including Uyghurs in Xinjiang, House Christians and Falun Gong practitioners, are well documented. At a Wednesday debate in the House of Lords on the same topic of sanctions, this lawmaker asked about imposing sanctions on Chinese doctors involved in forcibly removing organs from prisoners in China for profit. Will proper consideration be given to the China Tribunal's conclusion about organ harvesting and might sanctions result? What are the doctors who may have been involved? The victims are mainly Falun Gong practitioners and evidence shows there's mass medical testing of Uyghurs. That's according to the final judgment of the China Tribunal. And the dramatic erosion of freedoms in Hong Kong, a former British territory, is also at the forefront of many legislators' minds. Several politicians have called for Hong Kong's chief, Carrie Lam, to be added on the sanction list, haven't they? Mm. I think it'd be very difficult for Carrie Lam not to be included in that list um, because 
she has overseen a regime that has committed uh, human rights abuses, has broken down uh, China's responsibilities to UN declarations on freedom of speech. Going by Raab's response in Parliament, it's something he has not ruled out. Jane Wirral, NTD News, London. Now to China, where a city in the southwest is rocked by powerful blasts. This after a fireworks factory exploded. But eyewitness videos seem to contradict what the authorities are saying. NTD's Tiffany Meyer brings us more. Powerful explosion shook a fireworks factory in the southwest Chinese city of Guanghan on Wednesday night. Authorities say at least six people were injured with zero reported deaths. But residents have doubts. Local authorities say their investigation is still ongoing. According to images broadcast by Chinese state-run media, fireballs and yellow clouds rose into the air after the blast, and thick black smoke poured out from the plant. An aerial photography taken the following day shows the whole factory had turned to rubble. The building roofs had also been blasted away. One part of the factory had burned down completely. Another video shows the power of the massive explosion. The windows of nearby buildings were also shattered. The explosion even impacted houses and buildings located over a mile away. According to residents, there were three explosions. Locals say the blast caused dozens of deaths and injured many. We could not independently verify this information. Now to China's widespread flooding. Landslides hit the southwestern province of Guizhou on Wednesday due to heavy rains and loose soil. Four villages and over 500 people were affected. Many are still missing. One villager told us that the whole village was nearly buried by mud. Only three of four houses remained standing. Many people were later dug out of the mud but showed no signs of life. Others were washed away by flood water. Thousands of acres of farmland are also flooded. Likewise, the landslide destroyed large parts of the highway and caused a power outage. Even a mountain has broken apart. Many residents urgently evacuated. The owner of a restaurant close to one of the four affected villages says local officials have already taken control of the village. No one is allowed to enter and taking photos is forbidden. He added he doesn't know the specifics. The casualties are not allowed to be talked about. It is not allowed. We call the health center closest to that village. Staff members said the situation there is dire. The majority of the center's doctors went to the village to help, but no injured people were sent back to the health center for treatment. Villagers nearby say they've heard ambulance sirens ringing, but it's unclear which hospital the wounded are taken to. And elsewhere in southeastern China, the Wuyi mountain area has also been drenched by heavy rainstorms. One video shows some houses are almost completely submerged by the flooding. Cars were also washed away. A highway also collapsed, causing major traffic disruption. The monkeys that often visit the village were seen crouching on the bridge to avoid danger. Jiangxi province has also suffered from the floods. A local resident told us that the area's water level has exceeded the overflow warning level by about 10 feet. The water has risen so high that the river bank has been flooded, and in some places the river embankment collapsed. Local crops are also soaked. While in central China's Hubei province, this week at least two rivers overflowed. The breach has since reached 130 feet. According to Chinese state-run media, over 6,000 people have been evacuated, with over 2,000 acres of farmland impacted.